Conversations with Artists, brought to you by The Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing. Hi, I'm Debbie Smith, and welcome to Art Talks. I'm so glad you joined us today. So the reason I created Art Talks is because I wanted you, the viewer, and ultimately the purchaser, to get a better feeling of the artist who created this amazing piece that you're taking home the reason why it was created, the passion behind it, all of the history that went into it, the person's training, where she paints, what she paints. And then when you take it home, you can remember this conversation. So we hope that you will sit back and enjoy this conversation we're having today with Jeannie Wharton. Okie dokie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jeannie. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. It's Thank so good you. to see you. And it's so nice to have all of your beautiful work in the gallery. Thanks. Thanks for having it. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. It's just the colors just come to life, especially when you see it in person. And that means you have to come in and see it in person. I know. <laughs> but, I mean, just the colors and the textures and everything. So do you usually paint this way do you I mean I know that this was a particular <clears throat> endeavor mm -hmm. but what what inspired you to do the stories we tell I think when Peg and I were communicating and um, we knew we were gonna have a theme and it was so it was gonna be a narrative um, body of work and I haven't done that in a while because okay. I lean towards landscapes and okay. a few other things, but I had so much fun doing this. Oh, I bet. There was a side of me that I forgot about, and it's <laughs> like, oh, this is cool. Let's do more. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, inspiration is I, I try to go into a painting without any expectations All or right. any idea. I want to be totally clear and just work intuitively. And so how is it that you decide then? I mean, obviously you have to come with a canvas size. So you go and you tell me how you do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a lot, I like working in squares, but okay. these are some canvases that I had and, um, and I wanted to try. I haven't worked on canvas in a while because I like working on wood, the oh, wood panels. All right. Because you can get real physical with them. I do right. a lot of scratching and I build up layers and... Uh, but the canvases you have to be a little more delicate, delicate. with because, mm -hmm. you know, I've been known to poke a hole or two in there. <laughs> Which then, you, I guess, you can prepare <laughs> yeah, for a lot of pain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, know, you could just turn it into something else. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I kind of um, I step up to a painting. I do it on the wall, and I also have a table when I do smaller pieces. And I do more than one at a time. Oh, really? But um, I'll just start out um, just mark making and loosening up. Uh, act like a kid again and just get the crayons out kind of thing well, that's and fun. scribble and fun and loosen up and clear your mind of an expectation and just go for it you know do you paint with music or do you paint oh without? absolutely yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so can you tell the difference like with what kind of music that mm. you were listening to when you finish a painting probably I'm yeah. not conscious of that okay. but um, you know, I'll just put it on like Van Morrison radio or something Love like Van that. Morrison. Yeah, or yeah. Joe Cocker or something like that. Right. You know, the oldies, of course. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's different each time. If I'm in a Cajun mood, I'll do that. You know, and sometimes I'm dancing with you know while painting, <laughs> and I get paint all over the place. I am the messiest painter. But you have a studio. Yeah, yeah. I have a basement studio. Okay. Um, and. I've taken up most of it. My husband has a little corner, but he's losing that eventually. Yeah, eventually. What does he do with his corner? He fishes and hunts and all so right. all his stuff like that. All right. Um, well, I was going to yeah. say, you don't fish and hunt down the basement. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> just getting all his tack all together and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So what is the medium that you prefer to paint in? Acrylics. All right. I used to love oils, but I don't have the patience anymore. They take too long to dry. Yeah. And I like building layers, so I like having have a history in a painting yeah and um, when you use like the thinner uh, acrylics they dry faster so you can just keep building up yeah which and, is really nice yeah other yeah. than waiting for the oils to dry which takes Ugh. forever I know when I first moved back to Pennsylvania um, I started an oil and 
It was weeks before it was dry enough for me to do anything else. Like, okay, that's, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You've got to do something else. Yeah, I had to, yeah. All right, so tell me about your Louisiana history and your Cajun history. Uh, so, Because um, that's part of who you are. Yeah, it is. Um, I grew up in Louisiana, the southern part of Louisiana. My grandmother was very French. She's a Prejean. Oh. My dad's name was Joseph Clovis Duyon, oh you know, gosh. so it's like I come from Duyons and Prejons. And do you speak French? I, I, I speak um, words here and there, like I'm teaching all my friends, they're starting to say Gradu, because <laughs> I named one of my paintings Gradu. Okay. Um, is means crud. Oh, it's, it's okay. but <laughs> so I did one a, you didn't like or one that you liked? No, it was one that I was just getting over COVID oh. and I was getting ready for a show. So I was painting it and you can tell I had COVID <laughs> during the painting because it's like it was untitled like Gras Dark, you know? yeah. But I like the painting. Yeah. You know, but Cajun just, French is different than Oh my gosh, yeah. It's so French. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, it, it's just words here and there like envy is a craving and... You know, my dad used to always say, oh, you're fâché today, you know, and this fâché is cranky, oh, you know, just okay. little things. So I've got the frissons, which is goosebumps, you know, just little words like that I throw in. And but I think, I think that not just the language, but mm -hmm. the part of being, you know, from Louisiana, from yeah. New Orleans, you, and I'm sure I didn't say it right. I'm sure, but I'm sorry. That's all right. No, but, no, but it's, I'm, you know, it's like New Orleans. No, There's, it's, I mean, it's like new, it's not mm, new. Anyway. Yeah. But I think that um, it's part of who you are yes. and how you paint. I think so, too. Yeah. It's a very festive environment. Yeah. And my mom was a really fun mom. We used to do all kind of adventures and never missed a parade and all that kind of stuff. So I think that has to come through. Oh, it absolutely does. And growing up on water, you know, I grew up fishing and crabbing and shrimping and all that stuff. So I, I, this series brought it out more than... Yeah, I don't know if everybody sees that, but I saw right. it when I stepped away from it. And you can feel it. Yeah. 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 Which so is it, really cool. But fun. I think the colors, too, yeah. are sort of reminiscent of where you're from. Yeah. Or at least yeah. the little that I know about it, because I've never been, which yeah, is yeah. amazing. But yeah. Never you gotta been. go. Yeah. It just seems the energy is just so high. It is. It's just, it's festive. People yeah. have fun. And so when did you leave Louisiana? Oh, gosh. Um... I left Louisiana, oh, I don't know, I've lived so many places. Um, when well, I was young and out of high school, I was in a hurry for life. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to get married and have kids and all that stuff, and I just wanted to be an independent woman and have fun. So I left, um, so I graduated in 77, so it was about 78, 79, because I went to a little trade school to learn programming. And I left where I grew up then, and... Then I moved to Florida, probably in 96 or somewhere around there. All but right. yeah. Well, then, I just, I mean, you have so many things that have gone in your life, and I think that is reflected in your paintings. Yeah, yeah. But um, so where did you, I know that you have your degree in... I went back to school. I've always taken classes everywhere I've lived. Okay. You know, just because I... I'll be 90 years old taking classes because I like to learn. <laughs> you like to learn, yeah. I like to learn. I'm curious about a lot of things. Um, when we moved to Lock Haven, uh, Pennsylvania, um, my husband's from Pittsburgh. That's oh, what the right. connection with Pennsylvania is. Okay. And we met in New Orleans. Um, I guess uh, Lock Haven, <clears throat> I went in, I revitalized an art council, I created a series of art walks because um, there wasn't much in an art scene. So it's like, you know, I'm one of those that right. if it's not there, I'll create You've it. You've got to create it. Yeah, yeah. so why not? Um, <laughs> And I went to work for the only gallery in town, and I, I pitched a, a spill for him. I said, look, Tom, can I come work for you and maybe buy you out, you know? And, yeah. And after working there, I saw the numbers, and it's not what I wanted to do, so I went back to school then. So I graduated in, 50, I was 50 years old or something oh like that. Gosh. So I'm a late bloomer in my, getting my degree. Yeah, but that's cool. Yeah. And you, I mean, like I said, it is so varied, your life. That yeah, it's like, it I don't is. even know where to start. I, I know. I know you're also a graphic designer, which yeah. sort of marries, you can see some of your graphic work. Oh, really? I think so, especially that piece. Awesome. I mean, I think that's yeah. a cool thing. I mean, there's yeah. you know, other ones with your landscapes. It's not so graphic, but right. that, I see it in that. And those colors are just Amazing. Thanks. Yeah, I love that combination. Well, I have a BFA with a specialization in graphic design. Okay. Graphic and online design is the way they wow. did it at Lock Haven. So okay. it's like a minor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
I had done all elements of art, so I figured, oh, let me go back to school and learn graphic design. It's the electronic version, and you could get a job and yeah. all that. So I did it and got a job and did that. And, yeah. and then you got tired of that, and you needed to do something else. Well, yeah, I mean, it <laughs> ran its course. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like so many things. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, but most people can't to move like that you know yeah. it's like you're stuck there and you can't find a way yeah. out but i think yeah. you can always find a way out i, I agree yeah. i mean i i'm good at creating what yeah. i need so. well and that's a good thing mm -hmm. you yeah. can always create so i know that you also had a you also had a frame shop mm -hmm. which is, is secondary of course to the artwork but yeah. i think it's interesting that how much we have in common too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well it's that that kind of introduced me deeper into the art scene okay because <clears throat> when i lived in new orleans i dispatched barges and <laughs> I know, it's, I know. Yeah. it's like nothing ties in with each other. It's okay, though. Right. Well, it does. <laughs> it does. It's not like you've got the water in your mm -hmm. painting. So, of course, it does. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So, um, so, my husband did the same thing. We worked in the same industry. So, he, um, I wanted to take a break from it because it was, it's a stressful business. But oh, yeah. um, I took a break from it and I went and took a class at a frame shop not far from where we lived in Metairie, Louisiana, which is outside of New Orleans. Um, and they were looking for somebody to work there, so uh, I applied and got the job. And so that's how that started. And it, the guy who owned the, um, it was Frame City, and the guy who owned, he owned like four galleries, mm -hmm. and I was the floating gallery person. So okay. anytime a gallery was in a bind or if they had an art, artist opening or, you know, meet the you artist night there. kind of thing, yeah. I would go and help and, and that sort of thing. That's so a cool it's, thing. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a different feeling for being in a gallery because yeah. you have been responsible for making a show. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And because I had a computer background, I helped him with his books for all the galleries, wow. you know, because he didn't have anybody else, you know, that, you know, had computer skills, I guess. But um, so I learned the business of it. Yeah. And at, when we were living in New Orleans, I was buying equipment because I knew we were moving to the Panhandle of Florida because we bought a piece of property on a, on a little lake and, um, and I knew we were going to move there eventually. So I just slowly started buying equipment and was doing it framing in the back room of our house. And by the time I got to Florida, I had everything I needed and just got a location and did it there. That is so cool. And because I started selling art supplies, I was, I had a gallery that had, I had 26 artists in the gallery. Wow. And I had the frame shop, which mm -hmm. is the frame shop paid the bills. But um, I sold a lot of art for yeah. other artists. I bet you did. And then I started carrying art supplies, which it's like when I, by the time I had gotten burnout, because I was a one-woman show and yeah. you know I was trying to do it all, but um, I went back to school to learn how to use the art supplies wow. and started in clay actually, and then oh. kind of worked my way into painting and everything else. Do you ever miss clay? Oh, I still work with it. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just don't show it as much, or I don't, and I go and right now I'm really can't stop painting, so yeah. you know I get obsessive about oh. things. So. Uh -huh. I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll jump back to the clay because yeah. I have some ideas swimming in my head. And I'm a believer if it's stuck in your head, get it out. Oh, so you absolutely. make room for something else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. Maybe maybe when you, you know, might not sleep, then, you know, because we're always thinking about other things to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. But if you get it out, that's yeah. what they say. Write yeah. it down or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And you paint yours out. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. So you now live <clears throat> in... I'm in Carlisle. In Carlisle. Mm -hmm. No barges in Carlisle. No. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I'm just looking how you got to from Lock Haven to, I mean, I, I, how, I mean, in Pittsburgh, yeah. how here? I know. Um, we have, my husband has a son who he and his family are here in Mechanicsburg. Okay. So. Well, that makes sense. Two then. little girls, two wow. little granddaughters. So yeah, wow. that's kind of was the draw. That's really neat. Do yeah. they have any talent? Or have you given them any direction? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anytime yeah. we had sleepover weekends, oh, it's like, I do you not bring your good time. clothes. No. no. I've seen what you painted, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, no. because I think that that's better to paint yeah, yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, I really like your overalls. Oh, thanks. I think those are awesome. I was really surprised when I saw you in clothes other than overalls. <laughs> I, I wore overalls a lot in, when I was in high school. Yeah. I remember I wore them all the time. I had long hair and yeah. kept it braided a lot and all that. Interesting. Know, just a little hippie, you know. Yeah. Well, that age. 
Yeah. So <laughs> is that what it is? Then when you were, you know, in yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So what is your next project? Or are you just continuing to paint in this vein? Or is it, are you just letting your paintbrush take you where it, it takes you? It does take me where it takes me. Um, and I've started a whole new series. Um, I started the, the CVP, the Art to Life program with Nicholas Wilton that Peg has talked about. Yeah. Um, and I'm, this is my third year to take the CVP, which is Creative Visionary Program. Mm -hmm. And so that just started up. But right. So I'm doing that program, which is um, really fun and valuable. I signed up last year, but I was too busy. Uh, I was teaching a lot and traveling a lot, so I really didn't give it 100%. So. Mm -hmm. I'm making up for it this year. Yeah. But I do have a new series um, starting, and it's not narrative. It's more of, one's kind of a landscape, mm -hmm. and one is, I got uh, Franz Klein in my head somehow, so I don't know if you know him. I don't um, think I do. I might, but I can't. I you can't. would recognize it. He was known for his big, dark, black strokes. Oh, And then yes. in some, um, some paintings, he would leave it like that, but sometimes he had had color okay but they were mostly black and white so I'm not doing that it's just he's inspiring me right now the broad um, strokes yeah the broad strokes and mm -hmm. the boldness and and then I'm just making it mine by creating my own little span well that's sort of cool yeah but I know I noticed when you did the demo here mm -hmm. you are very connected in terms of telling people what to do and their prompts and telling them why I think that that is oh. so fascinating that you have that <clears throat> part of you that yeah. is a natural teacher. Yeah, it is. Yeah. My husband used to get so mad at me because I've been telling everybody how to do what I do forever. <laughs> and he's like, you're telling everybody your secrets. Right. It's like, so what? Let them try. Right, you know? right. exactly. Because it, it everything comes from a different yeah. place. And people, yeah, I've taught enough that uh, people take what they can from it mm -hmm. and go where they want to go with it. Right. You know, that's on them. All you can do is transfer information and see where they go. But the fact that they're having fun yeah. is all that matters, you know, and they're releasing with creativity. Right. And yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's being creative. Yeah. And it's like, you can't not create. Yeah. I yeah. know that was 12 double negatives, but yeah. I mean, you have to create, otherwise yeah. you aren't you. If I miss a day, I feel it. Yeah. It's like runners, you know. Oh, not absolutely. Not that I'm a runner unless somebody's chasing right. me, but I don't even think I'd run then, but here, just <laughs> take my wallet. That's right, just take it. <laughs> I know. But, but it's um, the endorphins that it creates yeah. when you're painting. Yeah, yeah. So. Is there a particular artist that you emulate or that you think, God, I would love to be able to paint like that? Yes, and that changes all the time. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, but right now it's David Mankin. All right. who is, um, he's from uh, Cornwall, England, and I love his style, and yeah. No. I think you should just go to Cornwall. Yeah, me too. I think that would be an awesome place I to know, because there's a potter over there that I just love too, Craig yeah. Underhill. All right. Those two guys are just are a big inspiration right now. Yeah. Um, well, but you yeah. could. I mean, there's no reason not to go. I, <laughs> right? I agree. <laughs> Let me give you my husband's phone number. <laughs> Well, I don't think he'd want to go with me. No, no, no. <laughs> he doesn't want to go, period. He doesn't want to go. He's not one not for traveling, no. That's all right. We have a camp, and his idea of vacation is going to camp, yeah. so that's well, fine. Well, that's a different kind of vacation. Yeah. But that's a cool. Do you paint there, too? I have a little bit. Not a whole lot. It's not your inspiration. Well, place. when I'm there, I just love sitting on the screen-in porch and mm -hmm. just staring at the woods. Just being. Yeah. 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 Or hitting a hiking trail. Or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. And that gives you more energy to create. Yeah. Which I is know. great for all of us. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know. I love it. Oh. It's fun. Well, is there anything else that we haven't touched on that you would like to? Um, no, other than please come out and see the show. It's oh, my just, gosh. Even, you know, when you're creating, um, you're so close to it. And, yeah. and you, you do the step back and all those tricks. and But it's... When I walked in this room after you guys hung the show, it's like, wow, this is really full of color and it's right. exciting. And you life. Know? Yeah, it was yeah. very stimulating. And yeah. 
I didn't see that until, you know, you guys have it displayed as you oh, do. Thank you. I know. So I encourage everybody else to do the same. Yes. Because it is. It kind of, the color blows you away. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I know. It does. I know. That's what I said. Like I, I said, know. with a couple of these, I yeah. saw them as you were doing them. You would mm -hmm. send me, and it was like, until I saw them in person, it yeah. was like, wow. I know. It's just wow. I know. It yeah. is different in person, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah. Because you see, like, not on all of them, but I do a lot of scratching, and I want history to show, mm -hmm. like that one in particular. You see blue specks. Well, that's yeah. a layer that's underneath there somewhere. Right, um, right. And the texture that you get through here. Mm -hmm. That one, I was, I had fun. I was experimenting with things. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a beautiful piece. I'm not afraid to try anything. Well, good. You know, I don't think you are. I'm, I'm really, I really am not. Are. I think you were probably a tomboy, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love fixing everybody's bicycles when yeah. they were broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're a fixer and a painter and a uh, doer. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, um, I range from jewelry making, like this jewelry I haven't worn in forever, but wow. jewelry making to... Uh, I have power saws. I love building, and then we talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Once you learn framing, right? I mean, you could just do anything, exactly. right? Exactly. Well, I think so. <laughs> I know. I think so. I think I could do anything. I yeah. do. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm. I'm just. Yeah, I'll try everything, and if it doesn't take, it doesn't take. Yeah. I've got plenty of others. Well, that's a great attitude. Yeah, I mean, it's true though. Yeah, like I said, you can't not help but create. I know. Miss Jeannie Wharton. So please, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation because I certainly have. And if you would like to come in and see the show, please do. And if you would like to inquire about one of Jeannie's pieces, just reach out to me. That's Debbie, D-E-B-B-I-E -E, at fineart2u.com or give me a call at 717-774-4301 or please just stop by the gallery at 190 Reno Avenue here in New Cumberland. So I'm glad you came and joined us in this conversation. And please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe because that's how we get art into the world. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next Art Talks to You.